film will show you how to do a line check. Start your engine, taxi, and shut off your engine. Although the plane captain will have checked your plane before a flight, it is up to you to make a thorough and complete inspection before each hop. We will demonstrate this inspection with an SNJ, but it is the same with any plane you may fly. Approaching the aircraft, stay completely clear of the propeller. Place your parachute on the horizontal stabilizer, preparatory to beginning your check. By using a definite procedure for your line inspection, you will be less apt to forget anything. Establish this pattern of checkpoints in your mind. The cockpit, the trailing edge of the port wing, the port side wing tip, the port side leading edge, landing gear and port side engine section, the front engine section and prop, the starboard engine section, the starboard wing leading edge, the starboard wing tip, the trailing edge, starboard fuselage, the empennage and tail section, the port side fuselage and baggage compartment. The first checkpoint is the cockpit. Both front and rear cockpits should be examined for any loose articles or rags that might foul controls. Check the magneto and battery switch using slight pressure to be sure they are in the full off position. Unlock the controls by releasing the lever at the lower left side of the stick. Visually check the oil level, being sure to replace the cap. Check the port side fuel level and again replace the cap firmly. Inspect both top and bottom of the trailing edge of the port wing, looking for tears or breaks, wrinkles or bulges, snapped rivets, looseness or dents in the skin and in the aileron fabric, all of which might indicate structural failure. Check the movement of the ailerons and the condition of the fittings. Make sure that lock nuts are secure and that the pins are made fast by safety cotter pins or wire. When you reach the wingtip, move the end of it up and down firmly, but gently, to detect any excessive movement. Examine the leading edge of the port wing with equal care. When you approach the engine section, keep well clear of the propeller. Look at the landing gear. Notice the amount of oleo showing and check the struts. Be sure bolts are tight and tires properly inflated. Check the hydraulic lines for brakes or leakage. Examine the cowling and exhaust stack for looseness and loose fasteners. Taking care to keep clear of the propeller, walk around in front of the plane. Look at it to see that it is sitting level. Examine, but do not move, the propeller for cracks, nicks, or pitting. Look for any loose fittings or other irregularities about the engine. Make sure there is no oil or fuel leakage. Still keeping clear of the propeller, start your inspection of the starboard side. Be sure the chocks are properly placed under the wheels. Check the cowling. And the leading edge, just as you did the port side. Examine the pitot tube. Then check the starboard wing tip and test it for excessive play. Check the trailing edge of the starboard wing, top and underneath surfaces, just as you did the port wing.
Check the fuel level. Then firmly secure the cap with the starboard fuel tank. Examine the starboard side of the fuselage. At the empennage, or tail group, examine the rudder and elevators for freedom of movement and condition of the surface. Move the rudder so you can see the rudder horn and cables on both sides. Inspect the stabilizer and trim tab fittings for freedom and lubrication. Check top and bottom surfaces of the elevators. Then examine the tailwheel assembly for proper inflation and oleo fluid. Continue your inspection of the port side of the fuselage. Make sure all gear in the baggage compartment is firmly secured. And finally, that the door is tightly locked. After putting on your parachute, you are ready to get in the plane. Make sure you are comfortably seated in your cockpit. See that your plane captain is standing by with a fire extinguisher. Then after giving and receiving the stand clear signal, open your throttle about a half inch, which will give you 600 to 800 RPM. Push your mixture control forward to full rich position. Set your propeller pitch control at full decrease RPM and place the gas selector valve on reserve. Prime your engine, two to four strokes when it is warm and four to six when it is cold, as it is now. Count the strokes from the time you feel definite pressure on the inward thrust. After checking the area behind your plane to be sure nothing will be damaged by your prop wash and seeing that the area around your propeller is clear, again check the stand clear signal with your plane captain. Then turn your battery switch to on. Make a final visual check of the area around your prop as you hold both brakes. Then turn on the magneto switch. Lift the guard on the starter switch and hold the starter engaged until the engine is firing smoothly. Release the switch and replace the guard. Adjust your throttle slowly to obtain 600 to 800 RPM. Do not advance the throttle rapidly, which might flood the induction system and create a fire hazard. With your engine running smoothly at 600 to 800 RPM, check your oil pressure gauge. If it does not rise to 40 pounds in 30 seconds, stop the engine and report this to your plane captain. With your oil pressure at 50 pounds per square inch, you can safely advance your propeller pitch control to full increase RPM with no danger of starving your engine of oil. Then adjust your throttle until the RPM holds steady at 1,000 RPM for the warm-up period. When the warm-up is completed and you have gone through your checklist and tested your engine, you are ready to taxi to the line. Be sure your seat is adjusted to give full throw of the controls and the best visibility. Test your controls to see that they move freely. Keep your left hand on the throttle, your right hand on the stick, and your feet off the deck on the rudder pedals so you can operate the brakes with your toes. Signal your plane captain to remove the chocks from the wheels. Keep your stick back so that your tail is held down. With the chocks removed, follow the signals of your plane captain as you taxi out of the line. But keep checking the area ahead yourself, since you are primarily responsible for the aircraft. Taxiing speed is controlled by your throttle and should never exceed a speed at which a man can trot. 
Proper taxiing is done by making continuous small S turns to assure that the path ahead of the plane is clear. Direction is controlled by rudder augmented by brakes if necessary. Use your brakes sparingly and never apply both brakes simultaneously. Taxi at slow speed, holding the tail down and controlling your direction with positive rudder. Never taxi with excess power while holding the speed down with the brakes, as that might cause the plane to nose up. Lag in rudder effectiveness must be anticipated by applying opposite rudder while your nose is turning in one direction to bring it back to the opposite heading. When you have completed a flight, follow your plane captain signals to return to your place in the line. After you have stopped, hold your brakes and advance your throttle to 1,200 RPM. On the plane captain signals, put your prop in full high pitch. Decrease RPM. When he signals by drawing his fingers across his throat, put the mixture control in the idle cutoff position and wait for the engine to stop. When the propeller has stopped, Turn your battery switch to off and your magneto switch to off. Then turn off your gas selector valve. Finally, before leaving the cockpit, double check to see that the magneto switch and battery switch are off and your controls are locked. With the wheels properly chocked, you are ready to leave the plane.